Okay, so welcome to this next video in uh, the playlist on calcium signaling. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to continue looking at calcium sensors. And in this video, what we're going to do is look at uh, something known as GCAMP. Uh, okay, so calcium sensors, that should be. Uh, and the specific one we're going to look at is a calcium sensor known as GC and then lowercase a, M, P. And I do not actually know what this stands for. Wikipedia does not know, the internet does not appear to know, and my, uh, my knowledge does not know. So I don't know what this stands for and why this um, structure is called that, but I'm going to explain exactly the principle that underlies it. Right, okay, so just a quick introduction to the problem we're actually tackling here, uh, the motivation for what we're trying to do. Uh, we know that calcium level outside the cell is much higher than calcium level inside the cell. So calcium concentration extracellularly is approximately 1.5 millimolar, whereas calcium concentration intracellularly is about 100 nanomolar. So, um, you can use calcium um, moving from the extracellular to the intracellular compartment as a signal, i.e. when the calcium goes up, that's going to change loads of downstream activity. So that's the general principle of this entire playlist, that changes in the cytosolic calcium level can indicate, uh, you know, can act as a, um, as a cellular signal and can change downstream signaling pathways, basically. Okay, right, so a very, very handy tool for, um, for physiologists trying to experiment with calcium signaling is a way of measuring calcium level, a way of uh, detecting, basically, when calcium goes up in the cytoplasm and where. So we want to basically see where calcium signals are happening. And GCAMP is a way of doing that. Okay, so let me just discuss with you what GCAMP is then now. Okay, so this is the ingenious little idea that someone had. Basically, what they make is a chimera, a protein that's made out of loads of other proteins. So, the chimera consists of, basically, a calmodulin protein stuck over here. So, this is calmodulin stuck over here. So, basically, when calcium goes up, what's going to happen is that it's going to bind to this calmodulin. Okay, so that's, that looks like a, uh, a convincing start that uh, we've got a calcium binder in our chimera. Then what we're going to do is have two halves of the green fluorescence protein. So we chop the green fluorescence protein in half, and we put the two halves next to each other, but sort of inverted, basically. Okay, so here are the two halves of green fluorescence protein. Two halves of green fluorescence protein. And you'll see what's going to happen in a moment. So this is green fluorescence protein. Okay. Uh, right, and then the next thing that you have uh, is the calmodulin binding domain of the myosin light chain kinase. So you put something over here, which is basically the uh, calmodulin binding domain. So it's going to bind uh, calcium calmodulin complexes. So the calcium calmodulin complex binding domain. And where do they get this binding domain from? Well, they take it from a protein which has a calcium calmodulin binding domain. And the protein they take it from is a protein known as myosin light chain kinase, which is important in the contraction of smooth muscle. So myosin light chain kinase. Okay, so here's myosin light chain kinase. And myosin light chain kinase is often abbreviated using its initials, so MLCK. Uh, means myosin light chain kinase. So we take the calcium calmodulin binding site of uh, myosin light chain kinase, MLCK. Right, okay, so now why does this work as a calcium sensor? This is all we need, by the way. Um, well, basically, when calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, calcium is going to bind to this calmodulin. So you're going to get a calcium calmodulin complex here. What's going to happen now? So, uh, let me draw what happens, basically, when calcium binds to the calcium calmodulin complex. Well, once you've got 
this calcium carbogenin complex, it's going to want to bind to the myosin like chain kinase, calcium carbogenin binding domain. So what ends up happening is that your chimeric protein ends up folding like this, so that the calcium and the carbogenin complex here, so this is the calcium carbogenin complex, is now, it ends up binding to this calcium carbogenin binding domain, which we took from myosin like chain kinase. Okay? So here's the calcium carbogenin binding domain. Right, and now the rest of this chimera is here. So we have the two halves of green fluorescence protein. I think I really need to put some color onto this diagram to make everything clearer. Right, so here are our green fluorescence protein here, the two halves of green fluorescence protein anyway. So at the moment, when, when it's in this resting state here, there is these green fluorescence proteins, they are it's split into two basically and it's not functional so if I shine UV onto this original protein then I do not get green coming back at me so I can shine UV on here and I get absolutely no response basically so the green fluorescence protein is in this state it is not functional then I have this calmodulin over here which I'll colour in pink okay and uh, then we'll have this calcium carbogenin binding domain from myosin like chain kinase here. Should have used a highlighter or just outlined it in blue rather than actually colouring it in. Right, okay. So now what has happened is the calmodulin, this whole protein basically is folded so that this uh, calmodulin over here is now bound to calcium firstly. So I need to denote that it's got calcium bound and I'll do this by not orange, that's not a good choice, it doesn't show up at all. Uh, green, we'll denote it by these green calciums here. So four calciums are bound to our calmodulin to create a calcium calmodulin complex. And it has now bound with this um, calmodulin binding domain from myosin light chain kinase. Okay, and now you have your two halves of this green fluorescence protein very close together, and they now dimerize. So you now end up with a dimer, basically, a functional green fluorescence protein. Okay, so now what we have here is green fluorescence protein. So if I send in UV of the right frequency, I'll have to make sure that the frequency is perfectly correct for this green fluorescence protein here. Um, then what I'll get out is green light. Okay, so this is a way of seeing, visualizing calcium signals, basically. Um, I, when calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, and when and where calcium goes up in the cytoplasm, you will get this transformation of this protein into this. And when you shine UV on your cell, then where you're seeing green light coming back, that's where this protein has been has folded in this way and has made the functional green fluorescence protein. And where it hasn't, where you don't see green light coming back, there, there's low calcium and it hasn't folded therefore. So this is how the GCAMP functions as a calcium sensor. We can visualize where calcium signals are occurring by where we are receiving green light uh, back from the cytoplasm.